Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and on this video tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to make some, I think they're super darn cute, metallic stuffed Christmas tree ornaments that have vintage metal buttons on them, and they're super easy and quick. Um, so, as you're hopping on, say hello, let me know where you're watching from, feel free to sprinkle all that normal good stuff. Uh, this project starts with one of my all-time favorite crafting essentials, uh, canvas stuck, which is just a really thick canvas that you can purchase at fabric stores, and um, you can make all kinds of different stuffies with it. So it starts with that. Then we're going to be using some all-over patterned stencils and some metallic uh, ink and then we're going to use some vintage uh, metal buttons and possibly some tool and some macrame cording although you could use hemp jute uh, ribbon as a hanger whatever you would like so let's just get started. All right, well, the first step is to draw your Christmas tree on a piece of canvas deck, which I have folded over so that I can cut the whole thing, both pieces at one time. Um, I will tell you the dimensions on this, but I just kind of drew it by hand. It's nothing, nothing, um, I don't have a pattern. It's nothing specific. Okay, it's six and a half inches this one, I, don't, I think this one's bigger, but it's six and a half from the top of the tree to the bottom, and then at the widest spot, it's six and a fourth inches right here. But your trees can be straight, they can be wavy like this, they can be absolutely whatever you want. Okay, and I think, personally, that why would I want to cut out these pieces twice when I can just pin them together and cut it out all at once. So let's do that. Now I'm making these for my um, natural themed Christmas tree. It's going to have a bunch of kind of cream, uh, tan, white, beige, wood tones, and like last year, it's gonna have a little bit of metallic to it. So, these are gonna be perfect. Okay, here we go. I have a front and a back. And I think this is the smaller one. This one's the little bit bigger one. So the next step we're gonna take is we are going to stencil them. And I tell you what, my favorite design for this project, and I've done a few, so I'll show you those in a minute. My favorite design is this. It's called Filigree Leaf Pattern. It doesn't have any specific direction that it needs to go. Next, I would say uh, Victorian pattern. I love both of these. Um, and I tried one in the snowflake pattern, which is cute. Um, so you can use basically any stencil that um, has an all over pattern for this project, whatever appeals to you. Okay, let's do this smaller one first. And I am going to stencil it before I put it together. Okay, let's do this one with my Victorian pattern. And I'm just going to lay um, my little piece of uh, canvas deck on top of the white backing so I have less to clean up and I can scoot ahead to the other one. Okay, let's do, this is called Glittering Black Ink. to put on my glasses to see where my tree is. 
So um, this this project, this idea, I think could go a, a million different directions. You could use fabric that has a design on it. Or you can do like what I'm doing, where I'm sort of making my own fabric using canvas deck stencils and some ink. You could just leave these plain, and I think they'd be super cute that way. Um, you could use vintage quilts. I mean, you could use felt. There's so many things that you could do. Okay. I think I have that mostly on. All right, let me throw this into my little tub of water. And um, Magnolia has a bunch of colors of ink. What have I done <laughs> with my glasses? Oh gosh, sorry about that. Um, they have glittering black, they have copper, they have rose gold, they have gold, and they have silver. So I'll be able to show you one of each. All right, and this is, this really would need almost no decoration, but I have these buttons. Um, these are vintage metal buttons, and I think they would look pretty on this. Uh, I do think, honestly, that I like the finer, uh, filigree um, design better than for this project better than my Victorian pattern so let me throw that over here and I'm going to just toss my stencil in a tub of water I'll come back and clean that off later especially when you're working with ink you want to um, get your stencil design cleaned up quickly. Okay, the next one I'm going to do is this slightly bigger one. And where did my ruler go? Here it is. I'll tell you how big it is. It's seven and a half from the tip of the tree to the bottom. And then it's about seven wide at this bottom point right here. So I'm only stenciling one side of this design. And I think it's important if you're going to stencil that you do that first, okay? And then assemble. And I have some that I've stenciled that are ready to assemble, so we'll be able to see the whole entire project from start to finish. Okay, this is the filigree leaf, which I just absolutely love this design. And I've used it on a ton of different things. Okay, for this one, we are gonna use gold. And all of these inks, these stencils, um, are from magnoliadiy.com, in case you wanna look. Or at the very end, if you'll just say complete supply list or supplies or list or links or something like that, I'll get you a full list. Okay. Oh, gosh. I have used this particular stencil a ton and it it still works just fine. It doesn't have a ton of stick left to it, but you can just hold your project down uh, and it still works just fine. So recently I had someone tell me that they thought uh, these stencils were way too expensive for one-time use. And I was like, oh my gosh, did you, maybe I didn't explain that these are reusable many, 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 many times. I mean, I'm shooting for way more than what the company even suggests. I'm usually shooting to use mine 50 or 60 times. <laughs> uh, so they're a good investment uh, in your crafting closet, especially when they're pretty neutral and you can use them in a hundred different ways. Okay. But 
I was surprised. Apparently, um, that person had not seen a video uh, before where I talked about these being multi, multi, multi use. Mm, this is pretty. And it's hard for me to show you. I really need to let that dry fully before I handle it too much. Okay, so I'm going to put this in a tub of water also, and I'll clean this off later. That's not a huge rush. A uh, huge rush. The stencil is though. Okay, so that was step number. Well, it was step number two. One, cut out two pieces of front and back of your canvas deck, and you want the thickest, heaviest canvas deck that you can purchase. Almost all fabric stores and some craft stores carry it. Okay, then, so you're gonna stencil it, you're gonna let it dry fully, 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 and um, you could heat set it at this point because typically when you're using ink, you wanna heat set it, especially if it's going on a t-shirt or a tea towel or a tote bag or a pillow, something that might possibly need to be washed. But honestly, I'm never gonna wash these ornaments. I never am. I don't know why I would. And they're not gonna get handled a lot. So I'm skipping for this project the heat setting part. Look at my hair, you guys. <laughs> my glasses and the hairspray are a bad combination. Okay, so here's one that I did earlier that is dry. This is the Christmas, um, the snowflake all over pattern with the copper, glittering copper ink. It's not pretty. Okay, and I have a front and a back, and I want to show you what I did to the back. Okay, the first one I did, I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing. I was just experimenting, and I had to, and I did make a little mess on the back. I had to come back afterwards and glue my um, little loop, which is what I'm going to hang it with, onto the back. But much better strategy is just to glue it inside. And then I made my tree trunks just by taking a piece, a strip of canvas that I tore. It can be however wide you want. And I think it looks cuter to have it be a loop. Okay, so then I cut it in half and I'm just going to See, it's a loop that I just folded in half, and then basically I just glued it on the inside of the back. You see where I have that? And here's the top. Okay. So, let's add this puppy, and then we will stuff and embellish, and we will do the same thing with this one that has silver ink and that filigree leaf stencil. Okay, so I'm using my low temperature hot gluing device today and um, pretty much every day because I've had way too many hot glue burns. Tell me in the comments if you have ever had a hot glue burn. I'm just at this point in my life, you know, I craft pretty much every day I am not willing to take that risk of another hot glue burn because dang, they really hurt. Okay, so I'm just starting at the top and I'm gonna go down a little ways, just following the pattern. Okay, and then let's stuff the upper part of the tree before we glue the lower part on. And I will come back and trim this up good because you can see, for example, right there, they're not a perfect match. Um, I'm using my favorite polyfill from Walmart. It's Crafter's Choice Polyfill Packing 
20 ounce. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but this particular polyfill says it's suitable for doll making. It's, it's pretty stiff, and that's what I like about it. It's not mushy. So I didn't glue this whole thing closed yet because I want to be able to push some of my polyfill into the swoops on the tree. And I could use a pencil to help myself a little bit more if I wanted. Okay, as with um, pretty much all of my stuffy projects, you can decide how puffy or not you like it. Good afternoon, Heidi. Love watching you and all the beautiful crafts you do from Teresa Schwartz. Oh, thank you. I love crafting. And um, I love doing it with friends and not all by myself. Also, I totally love making stuff for Christmas. That's one of my favorites. And... Um, don't worry though, because we'll also fill in for the next six weeks before Christmas with things that are not Christmassy. So I'm not going to do Christmas trees every single day. Okay, so then I'm going to finish stuffing it. Just poking a little bit of the polyfill into the little swoops on my tree. For this particular copper color, I looked through my um, vintage metal buttons for like 30 minutes and I really couldn't figure out what was going to look good with this. So I think I'm going to not do the buttons on it, but I will do the top. I'll show you how to make the topper and then I'll come back. Okay, so let's push our polyfill up in here and glue this puppy closed. I mean, I think it's cute just uh, just by itself. What do you guys think? And this one I didn't mess up. I remembered to put the little loop inside and the bottom of the tree inside. Okay, so at the top, what I have kind of decided to do is just a little crisscross type little bow with some canvas duck. I'm just going to tear into teeny little shreds. But you could use ribbon, you could use whatever you want. And then I'm going to put a little bit of cream colored tool on the back. And I'm just going to grab a section of it. Actually, I'm going to put the tool on the top. I was trying to remember what I had decided. And I'm going to use a teeny tiny little strip to hold it all together. And then I will trim it up. Ooh, I need more glue. So this is kind of sort of a stacked bow, sort of. Sort of. And I'll trim that tool up, get rid of the glue strings. Okay, so then let's just take this teeny tiny little piece and we'll just wrap it right around the middle to cover that up. I could put a button there or a piece of bling if I was blinging this, which maybe that's an option for this tree. I don't know, I'll have to look off camera. So I am just wrapping this teeny little strip from the front to the back. And 
and then I'm going to cut my little tool. The tool, I just grabbed a bunch of it. I'm going to cut it about the same length as my um, strips of canvas. And I don't know how well you'll really be able to see, but it's pretty cute. Okay, and then I'm going to put this on the top of the tree. This just evolved. <laughs> As most of my crafts do, I generally have a very, very... Uh, loose idea. My idea was this tree, this swoopy tree. And then I just kind of wander from there and whatever happens ends up being my craft. So um, I think, well, will any of these work? I wanted to do these projects using three buttons on them that matched. Do I have three of this? Yes, I do. And these are the same buttons that I used on the um, other one. So I think it'll be pretty. Okay. Uh, these, and you can, of course, you can use wooden buttons. You could use plastic colored buttons. You could use mother of pearl buttons. But when you're working with this kind of a metal button, they're going to have a shank, is what that's called on the back. Let's see, how can I... Make that so you can see it. Can you see that little piece that kind of rises above? And on some metal buttons, you can cut that off. So I just snipped that off. On a lot of them, it's impossible. Because this is a stuffed Christmas tree, I think that you could get away with having that shank still on there and just push it in. Okay, so this is what I cut off with these teeny tiny little shank pieces. All right, and let's just glue these on. I have really not crafted very much with my metal buttons because I'm so in love with the vintage mother of pearl. Um, but I am always on the lookout and these particular buttons right here, I bought this summer when I was in Bend, Oregon visiting my son at a little antique shop and they were, you know, six for 75 cents or something. Isn't that cute? Okay, so here's the first one. It has the same buttons. This is filigree leaf in rose gold. And this is snowflake. And they're slightly small. This one's bigger. Uh, this is rose gold. No, this is copper ink and the snowflake pattern. Okay, let's do the silver. So I got this one all ready to go before I came live and it has the hook and it has the little tree stem and I glued it. So we're good to go. Let's get some polyfill. We'll stuff and fluff it. Don't forget my glasses. They blend in so well with my hair. You know what, Barbara? For the last couple, I'm just tired, I guess, because I haven't slept well this week. Um, for the last, I don't know, the last few days, I need something to push this up. I keep losing these glasses, and you're right. These, this is a pair of pear eyewear that have the little magnetic fronts, which I forget to ever get those out. Anyways, they are clear, and when I set them down and don't have a specific memory of where I've set them down, then I can't find them. Okay, I'm going to get a uh, paintbrush. And then I have a good one. We'll choose this one because it's long. And I'm going to use that to push my fluff up into the top. 
because I glued this whole thing shut and I did not get these little, you know, floofs or little points on my tree stuffed. As I was going down, I just glued the whole thing. And I, these are gonna be so cute on a Christmas tree. They'd be awesome on a little, um, on a package. If you're not into the Christmas tree shape, you could make mittens. In fact, I am working on a project and I think I'll give you a quick sneak peek. I'm not sure the full, how this is gonna all end up. But this is um, tool, no, this is ticking, sorry, this cam is ticking, with some furry fabric that I just bought some tulle and some vintage buttons, and those are mittens. And you can draw those easy. So. I okay, need to glue this down just a little bit further so I can stuff those little points. These are so cute. I could just craft with canvas stuck and not, not use any other kind of surface. I love making stuffies. And... Okay, I'm going to say this is full. And let's glue it closed. And then we'll embellish. And then after I've had a, an opportunity to finish these other ones up, um, I have a black, glittering black Victorian pattern, one, and a gold uh, filigree leaf pattern over there, but they're going to take a while to dry. Okay. And I have a variety of silver buttons that I dug through my stash. I love these. Love, love, love those. I also love these. It kind of reminds me of a snowflake. I don't know if I'll be able to clip the shanks on these. Let's try it. Oh. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Let's see. No. This is an example of a shank that is too thick. Um, let's see. Let me try one of these. If not, we're just going to live with it and we're going to glue them down and they might be raised just a little bit. Ha! Okay, this is gonna be the winner. any kind of trimmer, wire cutter. My trees are beautiful, thank you. So if you're liking this, put some trees or Christmas trees in the comments, or say something to me, or do a this, or a this, it's a heart. Um, what does that do? It just makes it slightly more likely that you'll ever see me again. 
honestly. Uh, Facebook is so mysterious. <laughs> I don't exactly understand how everything works, but I do hear from lots of you guys telling me that you haven't seen me in months. Oh, Mona, look at all those trees. And I'm like, well, gosh, that really bums me out because I've been here crafting pretty much every single day. And I don't know why they show my videos to some people and not to others. But I have not given up crafting. <laughs> I'm not planning to. I'm still trying to mix things up all the time so that you're not bored. And I'm still doing tons of faith, family, and flowers. Okay, and then let's do that little kind of topper thing. Let's see. We'll do. Let me try cutting this. It's not going to work. Um, let's just use these two pieces, even though they're not the same width. It's going to be just fine. So I'm going to do a little crisscross. This is what I call a stacked bow. And I'll come back and trim it shorter. Okay, and then this is a piece of tool that is cream. And I'm just going to kind of gather it. Can you see what I'm doing? Oh, and I need a little piece of something to glue this closed. This will work just fine. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of gather it and then clip off. You see what I mean? And then I'm going to glue it down to the top here. I'm going to definitely come back and trim that. It's way too long. Can you see how that's just glued on there? And then I'm going to take this teeny little piece right here and just cover that up. Okay, so I have a question for you guys. Tell me in the comments how you feel. Is it okay, in your opinion, to put your Christmas tree up before Thanksgiving? I told my husband last night that I would really, really, really like to put our main tree up this weekend. And bless his heart, he said, okay. But I know some people really feel like it's not good to rush into Christmas. Okay, I just trimmed the back ones a little bit shorter. Um, so, Carol says she doesn't think it's okay to do the tree before Thanksgiving. Catherine says yes. I know everybody has their own opinion, and every opinion is just as valid as another. I'm just curious to know. I like to have some time for my tree to evolve. And I like to be able to continue making ornaments, you know, the whole month of December, pretty much. Okay, so then we're going to glue this right here. That will cover up that lump where... My little loop came in. Uh, 
it turned out pretty darn cute. What do you guys think? Pamela says she feels like it's up to the family. Charlene says she wouldn't put her tree up before Thanksgiving, but she's not mad at anyone who does. You know, for me also, here's another piece of the puzzle. Um, I want to be able to share with y'all what is happening with my tree and give you ideas and stuff. And in order to do that, I really need to have an extra long amount of time with it. Okay, so this is the first one that I made. And this is, ooh, it's rose gold, which is a beautiful color ink, okay? This one is silver, glittering silver ink. This one, I'm liking it more and more and more, is copper ink. And then over here, this one, hard to tell. It is called Glittering Black. Where is it? Here it is. Glittering Black ink. And this one is gold. Glittering Gold ink. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six different colors of glittering ink that you can get from Magnolia DIY. And um, I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. I think they're going to look super cute on my Christmas tree. I think that they would be really fun to make. I might have to make a few more. I think they'd look adorable on a package. They'd make great little gifts. Um, you could do mittens and use a few buttons like what I showed you with this one, but smaller. Uh, for your tree. That's the thing. I'm covered in strings. Um, but anyways, so that was the project. I know we've done a hundred trees that are on sticks, like this one. Not a hundred, but a lot. Did you guys see this project? If not, let's say um, chenille or pink trees, and I'll give you the video replay for this. These were... These are vintage chenille bed spreads that I cut apart and made this with. So I know I've made a hundred different trees. This is just one of many using these little sticks. So today, what I wanted to do was an ornament that wasn't set on a stick and that just could hang. And I think they turned out pretty cute. So, let me know what you think. Rebecca says she loves the ornaments. Do it this or this or say something. And um, most important, let me know if you would like my complete supply list and the replay of this video. Because I know some of you guys didn't get to watch the beginning and that part was kind of important. So you can just say recipe, supply list, links, uh, complete list, anything like uh, uh, replay, anything like that. If you want the pink chenille bedspread tree video, let me know that too. Oh, Marlene says she wishes she could be next door to me so that she could do it with me. I wish you did too. Teresa, I'll get you the supply list ASAP. All right. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Be looking here for pictures because I'll be getting some but I'm going to finish the other two trees first before I do that um, don't hesitate to ask questions uh, show your friends if you liked this project Ramona says Heidi all is terrific oh thank you that's my aim I aim to do craft projects that will inspire you and show you how easy and affordable and unique they can be um, you know, you don't have to have anything professional to make this adorable little stuffed ornament. So, okay. See you guys later.
Thank you for sharing, Kathy. I appreciate that. I have a gold one. Um, where did I put it? Yeah, this is gold right here. Somebody's asking. Let me answer that question, and then I will finish up. This is gold. It's the glittering gold ink. It's just still wet. And this was one that I showed you actually how to do on this video if you would like to see the, um, the replay. So I have, I'm missing one because I have five trees here, but I have six colors of ink. Do I have two pots? Oh, I have two pots of rose gold out. There are five colors and I did five different trees. Okay. Bye everyone.